Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to part two of vegetable and botanical dyeing. So I'm going to jump straight in here. I've finished up all of my dyes and I want to test some paper on them. So the first one that I want to test is my marigold dye that I have made here. Whoop, tipping some out a little bit. Um, now I don't know if you can see that quite so well. Um, I'm not too sure what color this is going to come out. But what I've decided to do is just pop some cheesecloth over the top of this and I'm going to drain a little bit into this alfoil pan and I'm going to test a few pages. So we'll just go ahead and just pour some in. So around about that much I think. I think I put a bit too much cheesecloth. Um, so by looking at it, it's a bit of a... A yellowy orange sort of a color. Let me just move this one aside you guys. I don't really want to stain my table. So it's a little bit hard to tell in the alfoil here. Um, goodness, I don't know what color this is. It looks a little bit darker than a yellow, but I've got a few pieces of paper here and I'm going to, let me bring you guys down a little bit. I'm going to dip the paper in here. I'm hoping it's going to die. I mean, I've never done a marigold dye before, so... Oh, looking at that, it's a bit of oh, a yellow-brown sort of a colour. And that might be because I use different coloured marigolds altogether. So maybe if you use just yellow or just orange and things like that, they will come out um, different colours. So we'll sort of submerge all that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, leave one piece in for longer than the other just to see the difference in, you know, the time that you've left them submerged. So, yeah, maybe a couple minutes for one and longer for the other or something like that. So I will pop this one aside and we'll pull over another alfoil container here. This one here is the dye that I have made just from the flowers I collected. I don't know what whoop, I don't know what flowers these were, so it was just a real experiment. So uh, just a fun thing to do. So let's pour this out. And to me this is looking like a nice light pink colour. And I mean, yeah. We'll pour about that much I think just put that aside there it's very very hard to see in the alfoil here now let's put this one in very very pale sort of a color sort of a yeah very light almost a pinkish lavender sort of color really lovely so hopefully this will dye the paper that color So we'll do the same. I'm going to leave one paper in for longer than the other. And then I'm going to transfer them over to my baking sheets here. Okay, sorry about the cutoff again, guys. It just sort of, uh, my camera's been acting up a little bit lately and it sort of just went all fuzzy all of a sudden. So I had to refocus it. So I've just grabbed another alfoil pan here and I'm going to try... The um, grape dye here, just put a little label on it. So I'm really, really curious about this one. Let me just grab some sheets of paper, actually. I forgot to grab that. And um, the sheets of paper I'm using here is just your regular copy paper, um, 80 GSM. It would be very interesting to see if um, like a heavier weight would take the dye differently. Um, so we'll just pull this great dye in now and it's a beautiful purple color actually oh, beautiful beautiful so I'm hoping to get a nice color out of this one you can see that one on camera quite well as opposed to the other two very very light dyes so I'm just gonna I'm gonna dip it in you can already sort of see it working there so pop that one in. 
and this one here um, as I said yesterday too um, if you're using a die if you're doing a batch of uh, papers and you're just using one die or something like that you will notice that the first time you put your first piece of paper in it will come out a more intense color and then as you work you know piece by piece by piece the last piece that you do will be a much lighter color um, so that's something that I did notice so there's our beautiful, beautiful grape dye. I'm really loving the look of that. I'm going to pop that one aside. And we'll do one more before I move on to sort of just laying these out to dry. So this one here is cabbage dye. And this one will be a lovely shade of pink. Um, but I did notice that cabbage dye does turn your paper blue even though it's pink so that's something to note I'll pour a bunch of this and I've got enough of it it's a beautiful beautiful pink color I'll grab some more paper over here you can certainly smell this dye as well these two in here just submerge them little sort of tester sheets um, usually when I do my dyes I do huge quantities at a time um, and I'll just focus on one color a day sort of thing and I'll do a bunch of papers and then move on to the next sort of paper the next day so I'll pop this one aside and then I'm going to bring back my marigolds I think I might pull one out and pop it on the paper Okay, so here are our marigold, our marigold dye, and I've just spilled some dye on here, so I'll just mop that up here. I'm going to leave one sheet in a little bit longer, so let me just take this one out, and I'll show you guys. I'll bring it down a little bit again. This is where I was having a bit of focusing problems with my camera, unfortunately. Beautiful, beautiful light colored. Uh, yellow it's not picking it up quite so well on camera it's a little bit more yellow than what you're seeing here so I'm just going to pop this sheet down here then I'm going to grab my pen because sometimes I get confused with what colors are what so I'm just gonna write if I can lightly <laughs> marigold tie under that so that I know so we'll leave that one there. I'm going to put this one back aside for a few more minutes just so we can see the difference in the, um, there we are, it's, um, not focusing again, sorry guys, just so that we can see um, the difference in the tones. So I'll just pop this one aside and I'm going to grab out my sort of flower dye that I made up over here. Swap these sort of sheets around and I'm going to pull one out here. Very, very beautiful um, light purple, but I'm unsure if that's really going to die much on the paper. It might be a very, very, very light color, if any at all. So just pop that one down and I'm just going to roughly right flower dye so I know what that one is there so what I might do now is I'm just going to move these sheets off um, because I'll bring them back when I'm going to do the darker sort of versions and I'll put them side by side and I'm going to go and grab my other two dyes now so that we can put some paper in those ones and see what they look like okay so I thought I would just quickly grab out um, a few more of these sheets so this one is my grape dye I'm going to take the first one out here and it looks like it's just it's taken to the paper really beautifully 
um, hopefully you can see that there it looks bluish on camera but it's actually quite a dark purple so I probably shouldn't have left that one in for as long as I did even though it was only a few minutes it's obviously hasn't taken much for the grape dye to quickly um, absorb into the paper so just gonna write grape dye um, here and let me just grab probably should have put something down actually because I don't want to stain my table I'll move this one back and pull this one back out in a few minutes time and over here we have got our cabbage dye that does look almost a pinkish purplish color so let's pull one of these sheets out to see what it looks like it really oh yeah that side there is if you can see it's a bit of a, a bluey purple color as well much lighter than the grape dye if you can see here let me just pull this one down it looks much lighter so let me just write cabbage dye on this one and I'm going to pop these ones here over to dry okay so I'm going to move on and I've got my onion dye in this bottle here so I'll just pour some out and as you can see this is quite quite a dark yellow almost a yellowish orange sort of a color so as soon as you put that in it it automatically turns a very 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 light sort of um, yellow and we'll just put another sheet on top here and we'll sit that one aside and I will grab our last dye which is uh, the last one I did last night which is beet dye Pour some of that in here now as you can see this looks very red um, it's a lovely beautiful color and I'll see if it'll see it automatically you can see that as soon as you dip it in it's gone a beautiful pink color so I think that the beets just like the grapes that won't take long to um, adhere really to the color so I'm not going to leave that one in long at all literally just a minute if that okay so I said I wasn't going to wait too long for this one to come out so I'm going to pull the beet dyed paper out already if I can if I can grab it here and as you can see that's already very very dark so hopefully you can see that okay I'll just bring it down over here very very dark so I'm just going to write uh, a beet dye on that one I mean I think it would just be a quick dip in and out really um, but as the dye goes on it will become less and less sort of potent I guess you could say so um, you might want to leave it in the water longer as time goes on just to get more color so I'm just going to pull out one of these onion dyed papers here you can see that there a beautiful beautiful yellow here just write onion dye there and we'll pop these ones back aside for about oh, another few minutes I think so I've brought back my marigold dye and just my sort of mixed flower dye here and I'm going to put them over on the paper here. Now I don't know if you can pick this up but this marigold dye is really bright yellow. It's just beautiful. So yeah you definitely can't see it you guys unfortunately but it is, it is almost a fluorescent yellow actually so I'd be curious to see if this second piece that's been sitting in here a few minutes longer actually is a bit darker so 
so far it doesn't look like much has changed so what I might do is just write um, second piece underneath that so I know so I'll move this die here aside because I will use the remainder of this out today and this is our flower die here I think that if you were to put um, you know hibiscus and things like that in the dye um, you'll definitely get some nice colors out of it I really don't know that this is going to produce much color at all even when it's been sitting in there longer um, it looks very light purple once again not much of a difference at all so I'm just going to write second piece on there and we'll see if um, there is a difference when they have dried so here is our cabbage dye and our grape dye back again this is the grape dye here and this is just a beautiful beautiful color it's it's almost a blue so I don't know if the second piece here is going to be much different um, it almost looks more lavender but we'll see how it how it dries so it definitely looks more lavender but I'm unsure if that's because it's just more wet if you can see there the difference this one's looking more blue this one's looking more lavender I'm just gonna write second piece on here and just move this one out the way it's a really really beautiful color so I can see myself dying again with grapes in the future so this is our second cabbage dye that's been sitting here for a few minutes longer so I'll just pop that there and write second piece on it so I know and then second piece and what else do we have we've got the beets and the onions left to do now okay lastly we've got our beet dye and our onion dye so these ones have just been in a few minutes longer so we'll see if they've made much of a difference wow that's a beautiful sorry let me just drain that off beautiful red color here it's absolutely stunning I think possibly um, beet dye might be a little bit darker than avocado dye but if you lift it if you just did a quick dip it might be quite similar to avocado dye so I'm just going to put this one aside here you guys and if you could see behind me I've just got these elf oil trays just full of color it looks really really beautiful so I'm just going to give a little bit of dye off there you can see there one's drying and here is our onion dyed piece I really really love the onion dyed you can see it's made a beautiful little bit of a darker edge around the border there as well so the thing with 80 GSM paper is when you're pulling out a dye you've got to be really really careful it, it's quite fragile um, so I typically do switch between um, like a heavier like probably 180 GSM paper I also use and um, dye as well but uh, for this purpose it's more common that people have 80 GSM is more regular to get I think so I'll just use it on this so I think I wrote did I write second batch on here I'll rewrite it okay you guys so that is our test pieces all done just pop this one aside as well so this is going to be really really interesting to see these all dried up hi guys welcome back so it is now several days later and all of the paper is dry so i'll just jump right into the results so this here was the first dye that i did which was the marigold dye and as you can see, this is the first sort of 
uh, piece that I did. I left it in for, you know, maybe a minute or two and then this one in for a few minutes longer. There isn't a huge amount of difference between the two colours. This might be a little bit darker. Um, yeah, not, not by too much though, but still an absolutely beautiful shade of yellow, if you can see there. Please don't mind my fingers, I have been, um, I have been dying with the dyes, so they're looking pretty awful. But this is the beautiful yellow marigold, I'm sorry about the focus there. Um, just stunning, so I will definitely be, um, yeah, I'll definitely be dying with marigolds again. And if you guys have them in your garden, I highly recommend to give it a go because it just creates a beautiful, beautiful yellow. So that's the first result. I'll just pop this one aside. So the second dye I did was just the sort of flower petal mix that I just grabbed when I was out for a walk. Now, as expected, this really didn't um, do much. The dye was maybe a very, very, very light pink, and it's not white, white, but there really isn't much colour to it, so I, I wouldn't do that again. Um, I mean, I would probably go out with the intention of picking certain flowers that do release a good dye, like hibiscus and things like that, so, um, but you know, this is what experiments are all about. It's fun to experiment, even if um, it doesn't work out quite the way you think it will. So yeah, absolutely no difference between one and two. That one's sort of just gonna go out. That's nothing to, nothing to really um, be happy about with that dye. So the third piece we have got our grape dye. Now this kind of surprised me because I thought that it would come out a tone of sort of uh, purple, but it really hasn't. It's come out a very unusual blue. Um, so this is the second piece that I left in longer and you can see there is a difference. Um, this is a more lighter shade of blue and then yeah, look at the marks on it from the uh, baking paper. And um, one thing I did notice about the grape dye is the texture. It leaves, it kind of feels really rough, kind of like sandpaper and I'm unsure why that is. Um, but I did grab another piece and I, I got a bit of a cloth and I just sort of wiped that away and then it was fine after that. But yeah, very sort of rough grainy texture and in some parts there's a bit of a sparkle. Now I don't know if that's got to do with the skins or, or what part of the grape but yeah, it was very, very interesting to try out the grapes and it makes a beautiful blue. I would probably do this again but I would only do it... Um, you know when I grab grapes on special like I did this time or you know you could probably try it already um, I think you can grab grape juice in the supermarket um, I don't know if that's 100% grape juice or if it's artificial I don't know so I don't know if it would die the same as um, just natural grapes but you could give that one a go as well uh, but yeah, it was really, really fun to experiment with the grape dye, and I do love the colour it turned out. I don't really love the texture, but it does come okay once you sort of get a bit of a cloth. But yeah, if you guys try out grape dye, let me know what you think of the texture that it turns out. And um, I know there are different types of grapes. These were black grapes, I believe, so you can get different kinds of grapes. I don't know if that would change the colour, so that's... That's, you know, something to think about and something to maybe experiment with in the future. So I'll put the grape um, dyed paper aside. And the next one here is the cabbage dye. And yeah, like I said, cabbage dye comes out a blue. Even though it's sort of the dye itself is pink, it will dye your paper blue. I actually might grab the grape dye back, the paper, so that you can see just the difference in tone here. So the cabbage dye is a blue, but it's a lighter blue than the grape. Uh, both very, very lovely. And the one thing I do like about um, these sort of natural dyed papers is the, I don't know if you can see, hopefully it'll focus. Oh, hopefully, sorry guys. It leaves a beautiful border around the edge where it's slightly darker. And I really love that. And it's got these beautiful markings on it from the um, sort of baking paper I've used here. So which one was which? 
This here is the second piece, and that's the first, so not a huge amount of difference. Once again, this is maybe a little bit darker, but yeah, cabbage dye is absolutely beautiful, and it's one of the dyes that yield, it yields me a lot. So you can get pick up cabbages for a couple of dollars at the markets and things like that, and you can get a lot of dye out of it, so it's one of the vegetables that I do recommend um, that you try just because of the value that you sort of get out of it. So that's the beautiful cabbage dye. So next up we have got the beets. Um, I absolutely love beet dye, it's really beautiful. Um, so yeah, let's have a look. This is the first piece and this is the second piece. Um, it is slightly darker, um, it's a beautiful pink. Like I said, um, I think that this might be slightly a darker pink than avocado dye. I'm not 100% sure, I think so. But it's really, this is a really beautiful um, darkish pink. It's not picking it up so well, it is darker than this on camera. So that is our beautiful beet dye. This is one I would highly recommend as well. Um, avocados here are not particularly cheap, so I don't buy them all that often. They're usually at least a few dollars for one. So that's not too cheap, but if you're gonna buy them, you can save the pips and the skin. Just like I've sort of done with the onions and then build it up over time and then do a batch. Um, but yeah, the beets, you can get them. This was a bunch of, I think around, four or five beets for a few dollars, no, probably a little bit more than a few dollars, between three and four or something like that, I, I can't quite remember, but yeah, you get quite a bit of, I think you get maybe, it was at least two liters of dye out of this of beets, so I'll pop that one aside now. And the last one we have here is our onion dye, this is probably my favorite dye to do um, because I use onions in most of my meals so it's just easy for me to just save the peels and then do up a batch of onion dye and I love the color it turns out because it's not a, a bright bright yellow it's a really um, I don't know it's a really subtle yellow please excuse my cat if you can hear him he's he's uh, being a bit annoying today <laughs> And as you can see, there's quite a difference between the two shades that I've done here. So you can already tell this is the one I've left in for much longer. And it is a really beautiful deep yellow. And once again, the beautiful edging on it. So yeah, yellow onion skins, highly recommend that you give that one a go. It makes a decent amount of dye as well. And like I said, I use them quite often. You can also do it with... Um, Red onion skins, they make a beautiful uh, pink dye as well. I've done red onion skins before and I've actually dyed um, my embroidery thread with red onion skins and that turns out a beautiful colour. So that is the results of the paper dyeing. Um, I will show you guys the twinings uh, paper that I did. Um, but the first thing I want to say with the batch that I did on camera, I completely went overboard and... It's kind of one of those sayings that less is more. So yeah, definitely the papers that I did on camera didn't turn out very nice. Um, but other papers that I've done where I haven't sprinkled quite as much on, they are, are much, you know, they're lovelier. But I'll bring them over nonetheless and we can have a look. But if you like this type of look, like some people do like a grungy sort of a look, the papers that I did will definitely... Um, Definitely tick that box. So as you can see, it's got a lot of markings and things on it. And I ripped a hole in it when I was trying to get the stuff off. When you leave it overnight, um, all the sprinkly sort of pieces, they do stick to the paper. So I've kind of got to get something to scrape them off. And that's where I did rip that. Uh, but very interesting patterns nonetheless, even if they're not particularly to my taste. Um, and the smell, once again, the smell is absolutely beautiful, you guys. Um, so there's that one. There's this one. Yeah, not a fan. Don't like them. Um, so there's those ones. But I will show you some that I've done um, in other batches that have turned out much nicer. So this one here is a beautiful mix of 
purples and pinks it kind of looks like a galaxy it's really lovely so there's that card for that piece that I've just done I still haven't sort of washed it off properly so a beautiful piece there here is some lighter tones and this paper here was 180 GSM so much different as you can see the less you sprinkle on the more subtle it's going to be so maybe just bear that in mind if you're testing it out and um, yeah like I did say uh, at the beginning of the other video um, Jude I think it was it Jude I'm so sorry um, did say that these will mold so um, that's something to keep in mind maybe vinegar or something might help I'm not too sure what you could do to prevent that but but I think because it's fruit and sugar it does eventually mold but I was thinking that maybe you could laminate them make them into tippins or something like that um, they're still really lovely and yeah just different different ones here they're sort of random patterns you never know what you're going to get this one's got more blue in it it's really lovely though and they're fun to experiment with you can give it a go and this one's yeah quite a bit darker that one's a really unusual pattern that's really nice actually and yeah so these ones here once again are darker as well that one's a really dark one really beautiful much better than the batch I did on camera I have to admit and another piece that I did do like my original piece I did cut them up and emboss them so I thought I would show you they're very light in tone and yeah they're embossed so I'll see if you can I don't know if you can see that you guys but it is embossed here if it's picking it up quite so well but really really pretty embossed but because the paper is quite thin um, I would recommend probably backing this onto something so what I did with this lot here is I made a little tag out of it and I just backed it with some scrapbooking paper and, and put an eyelet in. So, so that is that one there and that's the results of the twinings. Um, yeah, once again, maybe just go a little bit less than what I've done or a lot less you guys. So we'll pop those ones aside. And one thing I did want to do with you guys here on camera so I did want to emboss a little bit of my papers so I think what I might do is I'll choose um, the beet die I think we'll grab the beet die here and I'm gonna get sorry you guys I'm just gonna pull these out my embossing folders and some dies and I think I'm just going to cut some of these out and emboss them and see what they look like. So let's just put that on there. And these are some opal dies that I just bought actually and I'm really loving them. So I'll just quickly pop this one through. So there it's cut out into a lovely oval shape and I'm going to use my absolute favourite embossing folder which is the Flourish one. I have been using this one forever now because I just love it so much. We'll just pop that one in there. This would make a lovely tag as well. And nope, goes there. <laughs> we will run this one through very quickly oh it's absolutely beautiful you guys can you see that there the beautiful embossing on it it's much the paper's much pinker the lighting is just not great here today so it's just beautiful so that is what the um, beet dyed paper looks like cut out and embossed 
just beautiful i really really love that that make a beautiful tag or maybe if you want to um, cut something else in there and put a little bit of pattern paper see so that you've got some pattern paper showing through and it also backs it quite nicely so let me just pop this one away my Sizzix is in desperate need of a clean <laughs> So that is it you guys for part two of our vegetable and botanical dyeing. I hope you enjoyed these videos. Um, I hope that you guys have got some inspiration. I hope you've learned something. Um, and yeah, like I said, you can dye with so, so many things. So get out there and experiment and have some fun. And if you guys do do some dyeing, I would absolutely love to see your results. So just, um, I think... Yeah, you can probably just DM me on Instagram or something like that. Yeah, and I would love to see anything that you guys do. But yeah, once again, look how beautiful you guys. Absolutely stunning. But I'll pack this up now and I've got a few things to do. So I've got to rush off. It is Mother's Day this weekend. So do we have to go shopping for my beautiful mother? But I hope you guys all have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And I will chat to you in the next video. Take care, guys. Bye.